The story you are about to hear holds an important lesson. It's the story of an author in a book he wrote nearly 100 years ago. The author's name was Franz Werfel, and the book he wrote tried to warn the world. History can repeat itself. Franz Werfel was born in Prague in 1890 to a wealthy Jewish family. A popular writer, Werfel lived a comfortable life in Vienna, Austria with his family. His wife often hosted lavish parties where he rubbed shoulders with artists, scholars, and scientists. But this glamorous life would be turned upside down. The rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party spelled disaster for the Jewish community of Austria, including Werfel, his family, and many of his friends. During this time, many Jewish people drew strength from one of Werfel's books. It was a book based on a story he had heard about a group of brave Armenians, like the Armenian people, the Jewish people were facing discrimination in their own country. And like the Armenian people, the Jewish people were fighting to survive. This is the story of Franz Werfel and his novel, The 40 Days of Musa Da. historians, welcome to another episode of Anytime Now. I'm Brooke, co-founder of Honest History. In today's episode, we will learn about a famous author who wrote a book about an event that, in many ways, he later experienced for himself. Franz Werfel lived a comfortable life until everything changed. People around the world were shocked when the Nazi party came to power in Germany completely forgetting that something very similar had happened only a few decades prior. As you listen to this story, think of the positive impact Werfel's book had on the Jewish community during World War II and how Armenians felt to have their part of the story told to the world. Now, let's hop back in our time machine and get back to the story. Our story begins in 1930. Franz Werfel and his family were beginning their second trip to the Near East. The trip would take them to Egypt, where they saw the towering pyramids of Giza, and then on to Palestine, Syria, and Lebanon. After arriving in Egypt, Franz Werfel started to feel ill. He thought about canceling his trip and called his doctor. The doctor told Werfel not to worry. You probably have a mild case of malaria, the doctor said. Apparently, that was nothing to be concerned about. The Werfels traveled to the capital city of Syria, Damascus. Damascus was not very safe at that time, so the family traveled with a guide who knew the area like the back of his hand. Werfel followed the guide around the city and glanced at the scene around him. One building caught his attention. He spotted many looms near the building. These looms were used to weave carpets, and sitting near these looms he saw groups of young people and children. They looked very thin and tired. Werfel walked up to the owner of the carpet weaving business and pointed to the children. He wanted to know who they were. The man explained that many of them were children of Armenian Christians. Back in their homeland, the government discriminated against their families. These children had been brought to Syria to save their lives. Werfel knew a little about this. Many of these Armenian people had lived in the Ottoman Empire. But this empire discriminated against the Armenian people. A group called the Young Turks took control of the government and had some prejudiced ideas. The group decided the Armenian people and many non-Turkish people were a threat to the empire. The government began sending Armenian, Assyrian, and Greek people to camps. Over a million did not survive these camps. It was a tragic moment in history, a moment that many people around the world had already forgotten. Werfel looked at the young people sitting near the looms. They had found safety here in Syria, but life was not easy. They had suffered greatly. Werfel was determined to learn more. He began asking the people he met during the trip if they knew any Armenian survivors. That's when he heard an incredible story. The story went like this. In 1915, the Armenian people of the Ottoman Empire received orders from the government. They were ordered to leave their homes and go to camps in the desert. But not everyone followed these orders. 
there was a brave group of Armenians who lived in a place called Musada. They refused to leave their homeland. They were going to fight. When the Ottoman soldiers arrived, the Armenians of Musada were armed and ready to defend their villages. They fought for over 40 days. When their ammunition ran out, it looked like the end was near. But, as if by miracle, a French ship spotted the Armenians in the distance. French soldiers arrived and rescued the brave people of Musada. Werfel knew this was the story, the story that needed to be told, not only to honor the Armenian people, but to tell the world what they had experienced. Werfel arrived home to Austria with a plan. He called on the French ambassador in Vienna. He hoped the ambassador could help him find French documents about the heroic fight in Musada. The ambassador was able to help, sending Werfel piles of documents that the French government had collected. Later that year, Werfel went to the Armenian monastery in Vienna where he met the archbishop. He wanted to tell him about his book idea. The archbishop was thrilled and opened the doors to the monastery's library. Werfel walked inside and peered at the rows of books around him. That summer, his research began. Over the next two years, Werfel was busy researching his book and writing many other works, including plays, novels, and lectures. Then, in 1932, he finally began his first draft of his novel about the Armenian people of Musada. It may well be my major work, he said. To him, it was an important story to tell. Why was that? Because it didn't happen very long ago. In our own day, one of the oldest and most venerable peoples of the world have been destroyed. Not by enemies, but by their own countrymen, he said. The violence against the Armenians happened during Werfel's lifetime, and he feared violence against a group of people could happen again. He did not want people to forget. It wasn't long before Werfel realized it was happening again, not to the Armenian people, but to people he knew in Germany. In Germany, one political party was growing, and it worried Werfel. The party was called the National Socialist German Workers' Party, led by the Austrian Adolf Hitler. You may know this party as the Nazi Party. As the Nazi Party became more popular, there was growing anti-Semitism in Germany. Anti-Semitism is the discrimination against Jewish people. As an Austrian Jewish writer, Werfel knew he should be worried, but he tried not to think about it. Besides, that was Germany. He believed he was safe in Austria. His books were still very popular. In fact, they were selling just like before. But that was about to change. Just a few weeks later, German students rushed into libraries, pulling books off the shelves. For weeks, they searched libraries in universities, towns, and bookshops. They were looking for books they claimed were foreign or un-German. Many of these books were written by Jewish authors. The students tossed thousands of books into piles at the centers of different towns, and with a match, they set all the books on fire. Over 25,000 books were destroyed in one day. Franz Werfel's books were in those bonfires. Werfel was shocked, <gasps> but he tried to put it out of his mind and continued working on his novel. Hi, young historians. Time for a quick break from this amazing story to tell you a bit more about honest history. If you're enjoying this episode, then you'll love Honest History's magazines and books. Each one is filled with important adventures through the past, like the story of Cheng Yi Sao, a Chinese woman who commanded one of the largest pirate fleets in history, to Mansa Musa from Africa, one of the wealthiest people to ever live. You can pick up a copy or subscribe and receive three issues delivered straight to your doorstep every three months. Just go to honesthistory.co and use code anytime now for a 10% discount. That's honesthistory.co and special promo code anytime now. Okay, let's get back to the story. Later that year, Werfel finished his first draft and began working on his second, then his third, and then his fourth. He sipped black coffee as he wrote and edited. For weeks, Werfel worked from 10 in the morning till 1 a.m. 
Finally, at the end of 1933, he finished the novel. He called it The 40 Days of Musa Da. People in Austria and Switzerland rushed to the bookstores to read Werfel's new book. They were impressed and moved by the story of the Armenians of Musa da. But in Germany, it was a different story. The German newspapers criticized Werfel and his novel. It was easy to see the similarities between the Ottoman government and the Nazi party. The German authorities wanted to ban Werfel's book. A few months later, they succeeded. The 40 Days of Musa da was taken off German bookshelves. The official reason, the German government stated, was because the book was a danger to public order and safety. Werfel didn't want to believe it. In the so-called best years of my life and after working without pause, I now stand on the ruins of myself, he wrote. In Germany, I have been deleted from the book and the books of the living, and since I am, after all, a German author, I am now suspended in empty space. Werfel found it nearly impossible to work after this. The German newspapers printed article after article criticizing his writing. Thankfully, this did not mean the end of the 40 days of Musa Da. A year later, the novel was translated into English and sold in the United States. Americans celebrated the book, and it remained number one on the bestseller list for weeks. More and more people learned about the Armenians and the discrimination they had faced in the Ottoman Empire. Many Americans worried about a future where horrible acts against a group of people could happen again. Werfel visited the United States in the next year, arriving in New York City, where he was welcomed with open arms. Armenians living there invited him to a dinner, where they thanked Werfel for making their story known to the world. In New York, Werfel met scientists like Albert Einstein, scholars and artists. He immediately felt connected to the Jewish community in that city. I feel at home in a deeper sense, he said. When he returned to Europe, he found it difficult to jump back into his old life. I returned to Vienna that was like a cemetery, he said. I feel a kind of homesickness for New York. Little did he know, he would soon be forced to leave Vienna forever. It was the Nazi party's plan to create a greater Germany by uniting all German-speaking countries. And in 1938, Austria became part of that greater Germany. Now, the Nazi party was in charge of Werfel's home country. The Werfels and other Jewish families were no longer safe in Austria. Many of Werfel's friends fled Vienna within hours of Hitler's arrival. Those who didn't escape were sent away to prisons and camps outside the city. About 67,000 people were arrested during those first few days. Werfel and his family moved to France, but their time there would be short. Two years later, Hitler and his army marched into Paris. With Germany now in charge, the Werfels were afraid they would be arrested and sent to a camp. They knew they needed to get out of the country fast, but how? It was nearly impossible to get visas to leave France. That's when something extraordinary happened. A young man for the United States knocked on the Werfels' door. He was on a secret mission, a mission to rescue scientists, artists, and scholars and bring them to the United States. Werfel couldn't believe it. You must save us, Werfel cried. He and his wife realized this may be their only chance to escape. The American told them his plan. They would travel to Spain by train. From there, they would be able to get to the United States. Werfel, his wife, and three other people gathered at a railway station in France. You may not hear anything about us for a while, Werfel wrote to his mother, but don't worry. Werfel, however, was very worried. The group boarded their train anxiously and traveled to the Spanish border. But when they arrived, the French officials would not let them cross. Where are your visas? The officials asked. Werfel and the other four people did not have the right documents to travel. The group was told they could not leave France. They needed a new plan. There was only one way they might be able to get into Spain, and it wasn't going to be easy. Werfel, now 50 years old, and the rest of the group were going to climb over the Pyrenees Mountains. It would be a long and terrifying hike, but somehow the group crossed the border into Spain without being caught. Werfel breathed a sigh of relief. <sighs> For the first time in months, he felt free. From Spain, they were able to arrange travel to the United States. The Werfels boarded a steamship to their new home across the ocean. Towards the end of the journey, Werfel spotted the Statue of Liberty. He knew they were close. Now America lies before us, an entirely unknown continent, he wrote to his parents. 
In October 1940, Warfel and his wife arrived in New York. They would eventually settle in Los Angeles, California. Today, historians recognize the importance of Werfel's novel, The Forty Days of Musada. It brought attention to the atrocities committed against the Armenian people between 1915 and 1923. It also warned its readers that history can repeat itself. And, in many ways, it did. Like the Armenians, the Jewish people faced violent discrimination in their own country. Those who survived were forced to flee their homes and start a new life in a new city far away. But Werfel's book was important for another reason, too. It inspired the Jewish community to keep fighting. Franz Werfel's 40 Days of Musada was passed from hand to hand, one Jewish leader in Poland remembers. Like the brave Armenians of Musada, many Jewish people in Europe resisted. And like the Armenian people, the Jewish people would not be destroyed. Welcome back. Today's story is a perfect example of how quickly people can forget about important moments in history, thus allowing history to repeat itself again and again. The Ottomans' attack on the Armenian people happened within Werfel's lifetime. Yet, even he was surprised to learn about the experiences many Armenians faced as they were forced to flee their homes. Only a few years later, Werfel and the Jewish community would experience the same thing, proving that if we forget history, it is bound to repeat itself. That's why the study of history is so important. By learning about our past, we can help pave the way for a brighter future. That's all for now. But if you want to learn more about important moments in history, be sure to check out Honest History's books and magazines. You can learn everything from the history of money to Japan's samurai women. See you all next time. This episode was hosted by Jake Silberman and written by Heidi Coburn. Production was led by Randall Lawrence. To learn more about this episode, including more about the host, visit us at honesthistory.co and follow along for updates on social media at Honest History. When you think about history, are there lots of old guys wearing wigs and stockings? When you think about history, is Napoleon really short and folks have wooden teeth? Do you know that history can be the most incredible, amazing stories for you and me? Sit back and listen to a story right now. It's honest, it's fun, and it's sure to. Ah!